He's the number one prospect in the Blue Jays organization and a top 10 prospect in all of baseball, Nate Pearson. And if you got a chance to watch this guy in spring training this year, oh my goodness, he was absolutely nasty. What's going on guys? Welcome to the Anthony Bruno Show. I am Anthony Bruno and in today's video I'm going to discuss the Toronto Blue Jays and talk about when they're going to be good again. I'm going to look at the current players on the roster and in the system and then I'm going to take a look at the job that Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins have done since they've arrived and then I'm going to discuss when we can expect the Jays to be competitive once again. So let's go. So before we look at the present and into the future, we have to take a look into the recent past. Do you remember this cover of Sports Illustrated from October 2015 when the Jays finally got back to the postseason? And look at all these guys you see on the cover. Edwin Encarnacion, Troy Tulowitzki, David Price, manager John Gibbons, Russell Martin, Jose Bautista, and Josh Donaldson. Yup. They're all gone, and even guys you don't see on the cover of this magazine like Marcus Stroman, Aaron Sanchez, Marco Estrada, Jay Happ, R.A. Dickey, and Roberto Osuna, yes, they're all gone as well. So this team has obviously undergone a major transformation over the last few years, and that brings us to where we are now. The Blue Jays have missed the postseason three years in a row and are in the middle of a rebuild right now. Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins are trying to build the team for long-term sustained success. But when they came over from Cleveland in late 2015, a lot of Jays fans were so rattled because they were so used to the aggressive GM style of Alex Anthopoulos. He pulled off all of those blockbuster trades. He also happened to be Canadian. And of course, he led the team back to the playoffs for the first time in over 20 years. So you can see why the fan base was so attached to him. And another thing about Shapiro and Atkins is that they've had a difficult time connecting with the fan base, especially Atkins, who a lot of the times comes across like a politician just dancing around every question he ever gets asked. He's always really, really excited about everything, but you never know what he's actually excited about, if that makes any sense. But saying all that, I think that Shapiro and Atkins have actually done a pretty good job so far because something the Jays have done a horrendous job at for the last 20 or so years is drafting and developing position players. It's actually extremely sad to look at the best position players the Jays have drafted over the last 20 years. I came up with Adam Lind and Aaron Hill. Okay, they had a few good seasons, but come on, you got to do better than that. And I get it. It's so hard to evaluate baseball talent, especially when you're drafting guys straight out of high school. And on top of that, baseball is just flat out one of the hardest sports in the world. But there are no excuses. You got to do better than that. And just when it looked like Anthopolis was replenishing the farm system, he went into I don't give a crap mode in 2015 and sold off a bunch of prospects to win now. And it worked, which was amazing, but we all knew that the Jays were not set up for long-term success. So where do the Blue Jays go from here? The good thing is, is that they have a pretty solid foundation, and the centerpiece of that foundation is Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who, by the way, was signed as an international free agent by Alex Anthopoulos. But I was very disappointed in Vlad Jr.'s rookie season, especially considering how easily this guy tore through the minor leagues. Think about this. In his nearly 300 game minor league career, Vlad Jr. had more walks than strikeouts as a teenager. That is absolutely ridiculous. The guy can hit for power. He can hit for average. He has every single tool you want in a hitter. But I was just left so disappointed with his mediocre rookie season, especially when you look at other young guns like Ronald Acuna and Juan Soto who had immediate success at pretty much the exact same age. But if Vlad Jr. hits his peak, I think we're gonna get Miguel Cabrera as a hitter. He's that good. And by the way, Miggy also had a very mediocre rookie season before exploding into a future Hall of Famer. So if Vlad Jr. becomes what we all think he can become, then the Jays have themselves an absolute superstar moving forward. But not to be outdone is Bo Bichette, who unlike Guerrero, had a fantastic first taste of Major League Baseball when he came up to the Blue Jays last season. The kid can do it all and showed that he has the same sort of superstar potential 
as Vlad Guerrero Jr. And then after that, we have Kevin Biggio and Lourdes Gurriel Jr. Biggio had a pretty solid rookie season. He led the team in on-base percentage, and I think he could be a nice complimentary guy after the big two. And then when you look at Gurriel, he's a little bit older than the other three guys, but he was basically the Blue Jays' best hitter last season. And then on top of these guys, you also have Jordan Groshans, the shortstop who the Jays took 12th overall in the 2018 draft. He looks very promising as a prospect. He's the number two ranked prospect in the Blue Jays organization. So for the first time in a long time, it looks like the Blue Jays are actually doing a pretty good job right now at drafting and developing position players. And that takes us to the pitching staff. Now, last year, it was absolutely egregious. Looking at some of the guys that they were throwing out there on a night-to-night -night basis, it was almost laughable. And right now, the pitching staff still isn't very good. But the Jays finally spent some money this past offseason signing Hyunjin Ryu to a four-year, $80 million contract. He's an excellent pitcher, but he's also 33 years old. And the problem is that he doesn't have a lot of help with him in the rotation right now. Because if you look at the other guys, Matt Shoemaker, Tanner Roark, Chase Anderson, they're all 32, 33 years old. So basically what they are, are a bunch of veteran pitchers who are holding down the fort right now for what could be the Jays' best infusion of young pitching talent since the days of Roy Holiday and Chris Carpenter. And leading the way is the crown jewel, the six foot six right hander who the Jays took in the first round of the 2017 MLB draft. He's the number one prospect in the Blue Jays organization and a top 10 prospect in all of baseball, Nate Pearson. And if you got a chance to watch this guy in spring training this year, oh my goodness, he was absolutely nasty. He pitched seven innings in the spring before baseball was suspended. He only gave up two hits, one run, struck out 11, and he was hitting 100 miles an hour on the gun. He looks like he could truly be the centerpiece of the Jays' starting rotation for a long time. So after Pearson, the next two pitchers to be excited about are Simeon Woods Richardson and Alec Manoa. Woods Richardson is only 19 years old. He came over in the Marcus Stroman trade with the New York Mets. He's very young and very raw, but he's currently the Jays' number two pitching prospect. And when you look at Alec Manoa, he's a little bit older than Woods Richardson. He's 22 years old. He was drafted in the first round of the 2019 draft. And this dude is really good as well. He's currently the Jays' number three pitching prospect. And he's huge, just like Nate Pearson. He's actually bigger than Pearson. Six foot six, 260 pounds. He has a very nice mid-90s fastball. But unlike Pearson, who was slated to make his major league debut this season with Woods Richardson and Manoa, they still have to work their way up the minor league system before they can become legit MLB starters. And another thing to look forward to is that the Jays have the fifth overall pick in the 2020 MLB draft so they can add another pitcher or position player, but either way, they get a chance to add to the farm system and things are looking pretty good moving forward. So we know who the core young guys are from a position player standpoint and when you look at the pitching staff, but having these prospects alone is not gonna turn the Blue Jays into a World Series contender. They are gonna have to complement these players with guys from outside the organization. When you look at the Blue Jays' three best hitters over the last decade, Jose Bautista, Edwin Encarnacion, and Josh Donaldson. These guys all came from outside the Blue Jays organization. So over the next couple years, I'd like to see the Jays add a few potent bats that can complement Guerrero, Bichette, Gurriel, and Biggio. And here's the thing. Obviously, it would be nice for them to get another pitcher like Ryu as well. But if Atkins and Shapiro have showed us anything, it's that they aren't willing to break the bank on a free agent. What they want to do is build the core from within and supplement that core with veteran players who they don't have to pay an arm and a leg for. But here's the thing with prospects. No matter how good you think your top guys are, baseball's really hard, guys. And a lot of the times, those top prospects don't pan out the way you think they're going to. So when you look at the Blue Jays for this season, they have a win total of 75 and a half games, meaning we can expect them to miss the playoffs for a fourth year in a row. And honestly, we might see that for the next two to three seasons, depending on how fast some of these young guys develop. But overall, I like what Shapiro and Atkins have done to replenish the farm system. And you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's just going to take 
a little bit of time. Another thing we have to take into account is how loaded the AL East is every season. The Red Sox just traded away Mookie Betts, which was absolutely ridiculous, but they're still good. The Yankees are loaded right now, and the Rays, despite never spending any money, seem to have a competitive team every year. So the Jays obviously have their work cut out for them. So when we come to the big question, when is this team finally going to be good again? It's so hard to put a timeline on something like this, but I don't think the Jays are going to be truly competitive until somewhere between 2023 and 2025. And honestly, it might take a number of years after that until they actually get to a World Series, something we obviously haven't seen them do since winning it all in 1993. But if the Jays continue doing what they're doing from a player development standpoint, something they finally seem to be doing well after being so bad at it for about 20 years, then this team has the ability to be very, very good for a long period of time. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I would really appreciate it if you gave me a thumbs up, if you share the video on social media, and if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, especially if you like sports and you wanna see more content like this. And guys, feel free to let me know what you would like me to talk about next. I have a ton of ideas, but it's always great to hear from you. So that does it for this video, and I will see you guys next time.